Good morning from Stornoway on the Isle of Lewis. Uh, an incredible morning here. Uh, for the first time, I'm actually leaving Stornoway and leaving home. Yes, you heard it right. Anne, Christine and I are moving out to the Isle of Lewis and we've been out here for a week um, getting some things sorted out over here, but we're having to leave the island to go back to the mainland today uh, to finish off some stuff at the old house and obviously I'm away to Canada to hang out with Adam Gibbs for a couple of weeks. As you can see the weather here is just stunning. It's been an incredible week of weather here and last night I was out with Tom Heaton uh, photographing a sunset which was absolutely fantastic as well. So what I thought we'd do in today's video is we're heading back to the mainland. We'll be there about 10 o'clock this morning. It's looking like it's going to be a beautiful day, calm, clear and I thought we'd stop at some of my favourite spots on the mainland on our way back to the house uh, and make some images and to sort of show you some of my favourite locations between Ullapool and where we currently live on the Ardnamurkin Peninsula. So, I'm Alistair Ben, this is Expressive Photography. I hope you're going to enjoy today's video. It was the Scottish poet Robert Burns who said the best laid plans of mice and men, I gang astray, which basically means if you make a plan, you might as well forget it. So um, Easter Sunday or Easter weekend was not the best time to try and do anything on the way down the road. The roads were chock-a-block busy and uh, by the time we got onto the mainland, we really just wanted to get home. So it is now Tuesday morning. I need to make a video for this week. The forecast for the entire week is grey, grey, grey. Uh, but I'm going to go out locally near home just now and I'm going to make a video and you're coming too. It's, as I said, extremely grey outside, flat as a pancake with no colour. It's mid-morning and it's starting to rain. I'm a real pro, so let's go prove it or not. In the 10 minutes since I left the house, it's brightened up a lot. Another Scottish expression, if in doot, get out. <laughs> um, it's brightening up quite a lot. <laughs> There's some blue sky, the sun's popping in and out. Rain hasn't really materialised. You can see this line of trees behind me there. There's a river runs down through there. Never actually photographed there before. It's only about 10 minutes from the house. So I'm going to go in there and see what I can find. Um, and yeah, let's go. One of the key learning points I think so far in this video is A, to get out the door regardless of what the weather's doing. I obviously have to make a video today so I've got a need to be out but you know if you fancy a half hour out in the landscape or a couple of hours don't be put off if the weather doesn't look that great. Secondly, there isn't a lot of colour in the Scottish winter landscape apparently. You know the hills are a bit flat and grey, the trees are all in their winter coats still but I've, just beside this little river, I found this amazing little, just a little fall over some uh, lovely rocks here. And there's some lovely red colour in these rocks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick a case polarizer on here and see what I can do with some of the details in the stream first. Now, I did think about going to photograph some trees, which I can see over in the background over there. But I'm going to work my way down this stream first and then cross the fence and get up into that hillside. For this shoot, I'm going to use my... Fujifilm GFX 100 Mark II. I'm going to use the 100 to 200 zoom lens. I think it's going to be easier to zoom in on some of this stuff. And I'm going to stick a case circular polarizer on it for now. I may, at, at this point in time, I don't really know what the shutter speed is going to be, but I know that I want to use a circular polarizer. I'm also going to use the nifty interchangeable viewfinder on the GFX 100 Mark II because as an old person uh, getting low and bending down is decidedly unpleasant for me these days so I'm going to use this cool little tilt shift adapter to be able to look like this without breaking my back. 
one of the things I've always said about expressive photography is that if we focus too heavily on the end result, the actual photograph, um, we can dismiss interesting things too quickly. Um, and this particular scene, I think, is a really good example of where the therapy of being out and just going down the rabbit hole with an intimate little scene like this can actually do you an awful lot of good. Uh, I've had a really busy morning in the office. I've got so much I need to get done before heading over to Canada to hang out with Adam in the next couple of, or two weeks from now. So to come in here and to look through the viewfinder with a long lens and play around with just a very small scene like this, it's a kind of switching your brain off and it's actually really, really cool fun. Um, I'm not using a tripod because it's easier to do it handheld. Now, if I look at the back of the camera here, I'm actually shooting this at an 80th of a second handheld with the image stabilization on uh, f11 at 400 ISO. And that's giving me pretty much the, shut, the, the, the settings I want. This thing's moving really quite quickly. I'm using a long lens, so things are moving through the frame quite fast. So an 80th of a second, although it sounds quite fast, is giving me that sense of flow that I'm looking for. The, the joy of this type of scene is to find the really cool little flowing zones. And what I'm actually doing here is I don't want to polarize too much. So I'm rolling off the circular polarizer and I'm kind of kind of getting into this now when we get obsessed with the end result it can be very very easy to start thinking well what's the point of this photograph or is anybody going to like this and I think if we go down that rabbit hole too readily we really we become our own worst enemy. And I think that's a very important point is how often do we talk ourselves out of things? How often do we worry what other people are going to be thinking or evaluating or judging? And um, whereas I'm just having a bit of a cool time. So um, that's a win as far as I'm concerned. I'll get back to my rubbish photos now. <laughs> walking along this kind of pasture towards where I can cross the gate to get up into these trees over there and one of the things I really kind of love about this is even though we've been living here for about four and a half years and as I said we're moving out to the Western Isles in the next six weeks or so is I'm still finding new things never walked down here before obviously we live surrounded by a pretty wild and beautiful area so I can't be expected to be everywhere but you know, I think going somewhere, so going somewhere that you've never been and just playfully exploring is a really cool thing to do. The sun's come out, I'm actually overheating, it's probably about eight degrees, but it feels really warm. We're gonna head up into this area of woodland up at the top of the hill there, and you can see there's some quite cool things up there, and I am keen to explore. Now, something I must have said a gazillion times here in expressive photography is it's really good to have an objective, it's really good to have a goal and uh, heading up onto the hill there to shoot those trees. But as you can see, the hillside behind me here, above these trees, I just feel there's some really nice transitions between the trees and the mountainside. 
been playing around with white balance a little bit. Uh, I had a warm white balance on that made everything feel pretty warm. <laughs> Duh. Uh, so I've cooled it down a little bit just to create a little bit more color contrast. And, and I think I might actually prefer that. What I've got here, and I'm filming through the video camera, yeah, through my main camera here, just so you can see what I'm actually looking at. It's quite uh, distant, but there's one big oak just standing out against the birch there in the background. And I put the camera in X-Pan, this uh, 65 by 24 aspect ratio that I really, really like. And I've created a slice of the landscape, getting rid of the sky, getting rid of the grassy foreground. And what that's doing is it's just isolating that beautiful luminosity of that tree uh, stood out against this kind of uh, the birch trees there. When things are backlit, it can be really, really good for just uh, quite high contrast forest scenes. And I'm calling this a forest scene even though I'm out on the hill. But the thing I'm excited about today is that I feel I'm putting expressive photography into practice. I've come out without a plan. I've come out without any expectations. I've come out thinking it was going to be one type of weather and it's turned into something else. And I feel quite self-validated actually that I can come out here and I can do these things with the pressure of having to actually make content uh, for the YouTube channel, but still enjoying myself at the same time. And I, I feel a real buzz from that. And I think I want to thank Tom Heaton actually. I was out with him last Saturday and uh, we went and made a video together out in the Isle of Lewis and it was amazing just to go out and shoot with somebody else and to have a lot of fun and just to make video and, and just be out here having a great time. I have to say I've had a very enjoyable couple of hours out here. I, I came out with pretty low expectations, um, which are still expectations, I suppose. I'd still made a judgment of what I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be grey and maybe rainy and a bit flat and boring. But in actual fact, it turned out to be uh, intermittent sunshine. The wind's picking up a little bit now, making photographing the vegetation a little bit harder. Um, but at the end of the day, what something I always say here on expressive photography is the gift that we have of being landscape photographers to be out in this majestic landscape on my own, not a person in sight, completely wild and desolate. I'm here on my own, I'm seeing things that catch my eye. I've just been using the 100 to 200 mil today pretty much all the time, case circular polarizer just to control the amount of reflection of either the water or the trees themselves. Um, intimate photography most of the time today again, um, which one would expect at noon or in the middle of the day. So, you know, if this is the only time I've got to get out this week because of a bunch of things I've got to do, then 
if it's noon, then it's noon. I didn't have time this morning and I don't have time later. So if this is when I get a chance to be out, I'm going to make the most of being out in, when I can. So I hope that this little primer of how to be an expressive photographer in practice has been helpful to you. Um, dig into the ebook store, uh, Luminosity and Contrast, The Color of Meaning and Creativity Superpowers are the expressive photography uh, mantra, as it were. Um, that's where I talk about all of the different attributes that I notice in the landscape and how to compose with them to make images that are concise and feel as if they belong in the frame. It's an amazing world we live in. And uh, I feel very grateful, uh, referencing back to the last video I produced uh, to illustrate my book of life with photographs every time I go out with my camera. So I'm going to close for today. Uh, if you find this stuff useful, please hit the subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, get a dive into the comments. It all helps the YouTube algorithm. And I look forward to chatting to you again very, very shortly. Until then, have a great day wherever you are and I hope you are well. Bye for now.